trending, sports, news, and more. Welcome to ASA Network. In this video, we'll be looking at the coup in Niger Junta, Ecowas, and Nigeria as a sovereign African country. The coup, in which the coup leader Abdurrahman Tijani claimed the coup was well intended, stating that they struck to starve an imminent threat that would have affected not only Niger but also Nigeria. This comes after the presidential guards of Niger had seized power from the democratically elected president Mohamed Bazoum late last month, Wednesday, July 26, 2023. The Niger Junta coup gained support from Russia and neighboring countries Mali and Burkina Faso after economic community of West African states ECOWAS gave threats of military intervention days later July 30th giving an ultimatum to the military junta in Niger to release ousted president Mohamed Bazoum and restore democratic order or risk military intervention of which the deadline has elapsed and a meeting of the ECOWAS defense chiefs earlier scheduled in Ghana but didn't hold because of unforeseen circumstances was finally held Thursday 17th and again scheduled for Friday 18th of August to finalize plans for the deployment of the standby force. The economic community of West African states, ECOWAS, also gained support from US, France, and Germany after the two latter countries announced on Monday, July 31st, the suspension of their financial disbursement to the West African country following the coup. The African Union and also member ECOWAS countries, Nigeria, Ivory Coast, Republic of Benin, Senegal have committed troops and resources to the regional bloc's planned military intervention in the Republic of Niger in the event a go-ahead for invasion is approved, with foreign countries like the United Kingdom, United States, France, Italy, Spain and Germany evacuating their citizens. The Niger junta also withdrew ambassadors from Nigeria, France, the United States and Togo on August 4th and Niger has been placed in blackouts and locked borders. Thousands of the Nigerian citizens on the other hand rallied support for the coup leaders of the military junta in Niger on August 6th as they gathered at a stadium to show support for the regime, waving Nigerian flags and some holding Russian flags at the 30,000 capacity stadium named after Shaini Kaunche who led Niger's first coup d'etat in 1974. With a new government formed on August 7th by the military junta, the Niger coup leaders said they were open for dialogue after meeting with Nigerian Muslim clerics on August 10th, the only meeting held after the junta aborted negotiations talk with the UN and ECOWAS. With the acceptance of dialogue, the Niger military junta said the ousted president Bazam would face prosecution for a number of reasons and the junta spokesman said Bazam was granted access to his doctors and was in fine state and assured that Bazam's well-being would be treated with respect in exchange for an absence of foreign intervention. The move to prosecute Bazam, however, has been disapproved by the coalition of northern groups CNG on August 15th and a cautioning to President Bola Ahmed Tinubu as the chairman of the ECOWAS Authority of Heads of State and Government to resist the temptation of allowing Nigeria to lead or in any way take part in any form of the use of force in Niger or any other West African or African nation. Spokesperson Abdul Aziz Suleiman said, the CNG pointed out that a war initiated by ECOWAS and Nigeria and the instability in Niger Republic will be counterproductive with the possibility of spiraling into long-term armed conflicts that will hurt countries of the sub-region with intended political and socio-economic consequences. In handling this issue, therefore, ECOWAS must take into consideration the interests of the civilian population of Niger who by all indications and for whatever reasons appear to support the military coup leaders, stating all parties to the prevailing crisis must agree to reasonable terms in bringing about long-term peace. Nigeria, led by the ECOWAS chairman Bola Ahmed Tinubu, GCFR, faces its own political and socio-economic crisis, with the citizens humbly awaiting the verdict from the judiciary on the February 2023 election results, despite Tinubu's inauguration as president of the sovereign African country, Nigeria. In the wake of Tinubu's leadership, Nigeria tops in the ranking of countries with the highest rate of unemployment in the world, with a 33.3% unemployment rates with more increase to 40.6 percent which is half of the population in their productive age corruption in nigeria is high taking into account of various factors including weak governance structures lack of transparency and accountability poverty and cultural acceptance of corrupt practices the nigerian police and other forces performing duties not assigned to them usurping and harassing its people with guns that was bought with the workers tax money extremely high fuel prices poor minimum wage and bad economic policies keep the 
saturating the country again with an impending strike from the Nigerian Workers Union or Nigerian Labor Congress NLC as said by the president on Monday 15th August Mr. Joe Ajero also the national president of Natural Oil and Gas Suppliers Association of Nigeria Nogasa Mr. Bennett Kori urged the federal government to act urgently to halt the steady slide in the value of Naira to dollar to curb the rising foil price. This comes after President Bola Ahmed Tinubu promised to address all the problems NLC addressed and Nigerians are facing. On the ultimatum of the second week of August to begin work by possibly releasing palliatives, increasing minimum wage and implementing good economic policies. But in a turn of events, the President and the federal government of Nigeria announced Thursday, August 17th, a 5 billion Naira subsidy palliative to each state of the country, about 185 billion Naira, with little information about how much the government has gained from the subsidy removal so far. But in a possible trillion Naira approximation, Nigerians will wonder if this will be enough to support the over 210 million population in the country. The president and the federal government, now more focused on the Niger Junta crisis, as the citizens are waiting the start of good governance in the country and the verdict of the judiciary, deciding if the People's Democratic Party candidate Atiku Abubakar GCON or Labour Party candidate Peter Gregory Obusi Obi CON or the current president is the deserving winner for the February 2023 election results released by INEC. The Nigerian citizens also await the federal government to provide employment, increase security, to provide better infrastructures, better education, better medical provisions, better changes in economic policies and healthy environment. And that's all in this video. Kindly like, share, comment and subscribe for more interesting content. Subscribe!